Transition Ministries, a service of the religious community for those in the job search process. To learn more, stay with us on this edition of Boston Faith Dialogue. This is Austin Faith Dialogue, a public affairs program discussing the important crossroad of religion in life, produced by Austin Metropolitan Ministries in cooperation with KTBC-TV. Austin Faith Dialogue highlights the interaction of the religious community with the social and cultural issues throughout our area. Now, today's edition of Austin Faith Dialogue. Hello, I'm Richard Thompson of Austin Metropolitan Ministries, greeting you today and your host for this edition of Austin Faith Dialogue. Some call it downsizing, some call it right-sizing, or by whatever term, what's happening in our society today is a profound transition in the job market. And as people locally are looking for help in the job search, there has emerged a ministry called Career Transition Ministries. And today we're privileged to have folks who have helped in this process, and we greet them now. We greet first Rhonda, who is uh, uh, a Judy Rohde, beg your pardon. It's all right. We're having a Rhonda later in the yeah. show. <laughs> and uh, uh, Clyde Presswood, who is involved in, uh, I think, maybe in the origin of this, uh, weren't you, Clyde? Yes, yes, I was. I've uh, been involved with uh, this, uh, with job support at St. Matthew's and with Career Transition Ministries. Uh, for the last for the last year or so yes sir. Mm -hmm. now uh just give us a little bit of a sense of uh, what's involved in your work what we do is we bring people people ask we bring people into the to the to our to our group uh, there doesn't require any particular um, uh, information they, they come to us and looking for help and we provide assistance to them uh, at St. Matthew's uh, every Monday between St. Matthew's Episcopal Church. Episcopal Church. Yes, okay. sir. <clears throat> they come every Monday. You were saying come every Monday uh, from one to t from twelve to one, and we talk about where they are in their job search, and we try to help them realize that they're not in it alone, and how and we try to provide information uh, to to for them to help each other. Okay. Synergistically speaking. Okay. Now you're part of this. Too, Judy. Yes, I am, Richard. <laughs> I've been uh, a facilitator for this group about, oh, maybe six years. And uh, in the last year, we've also formed a women's job support group that meets at St. Matthew's as well mm -hmm. on Mondays from 6 to about 8. You know, we have this Monday time frame because Monday's kind of the beginning of the week for job search. And <laughs> it's, it's a challenging time when the weekend's over and you're out there and know that you got to continue on. Mm -hmm. So it's very intentional that we have it on that particular day. Could you call this like a, a job support group that people are helping each other emotionally as well as practically speaking? Exactly. There's no question about that. Um, there is a synergy. We are about networking. We are about resourcing. We're about brainstorming. And we're definitely about emotional support. You mm -hmm. know, Richard Gallup, uh, the Gallup poll person, um, did a survey where he says that Americans are the loneliest people in the world. I think that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. And then you take a person who's unemployed and add that dimension to lonely, and you've got lonely. Mm -hmm. So we are definitely about um, a place for people to come to know that they are not alone. It's also a place to become accountable. Uh, a lot of times we have um, people who will indeed commit to going out there and making a few cold calls on employers when they know they're going to have to come back the next week and say, I did it, mm -hmm. uh, that possibly would not do that without that impetus. I see. And even if those opportunities didn't work out, they at least can say, I've, I'm out there trying. And that's, that's a wonderful point. Yes, yeah, exactly. Right. As long as people are doing um, the things that they need to do, they are going to find work. You know, mm -hmm. Tom Jackson says it's that you've got to have the thousand no's to get to the yes. Okay. So, and we also help mm -hmm. people with that whole issue of rejection. Rejection is tough on all of us. Mm -hmm. And uh, learning how to deal with that is really important on job search. Well, I, uh, I think that the, uh, the spiritual dimension of this would come in, too. I mean, don't you find, uh, Clyde, that... It's not just <clears throat> we're helping each other in a human way, but that you're looking for some support otherwise. Yes, yes, and you do get a lot of support, and that's why we hold it in a church, because it's the feeling is there 
for the people who come. They, they realize each program is begun with a prayer and ended with a prayer. And so the, the nature of, of the spiritual nature is there for each of them. And I think they feel more comfortable in that setting. Mm -hmm. Well, besides St. Matthew's Episcopal, uh, you were saying before the show, telling me that there are other places in town that you're doing this. Could you identify those places? Yes. The, the other places are Riverbend Baptist Church. Riverbend uh, has their support group meets on the first and third Wednesdays at 7 o'clock. Uh, St. Catharines of Siena in southeast Austin is, southwest Austin, I'm sorry, is, uh, is also a part of the group. And Our Lady of Guadalupe over on the east side. And it's been our hope with through the Career Transition Ministries to open this up as a cluster to where we can have clusters in the four areas of Austin I see. in which people w we can draw as many as as ten clusters of maybe four churches per cluster and that way we could reach hopefully uh, on any given time uh, from the pulpit of course 40,000 people and ask them where are the jobs mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so uh, just to, to round this off you've got St. Matthew's meeting on Monday night Every, Monday, we meet Monday at 12 noon, and then Judy's group meets there at uh, 6. Is that oh, right? I six. see. Okay. We have two groups that two. meet on Monday. All yes, right. two groups that meet mm -hmm. on Monday. And out at uh, in River Bend, you said every other Wednesday? Every every other Wednesday at uh, at, at 7 o'clock, yes. All right. Do you know the times of meeting at uh, St. Catharines and Southwest? St. St. Catharines of Siena, I believe, meets on Monday morning at 10 o'clock, and I'm not sure when uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe okay. is meeting. Well, <clears throat> I think if people wanted information about, you know, when do you get together at any of these places, they could call you at the, at the number that, um, we'll okay. see if we can bring that up on the screen because okay. I suspect that there are folks that would like to, uh, there it is, 795-8275. Uh, yes. yes, Okay. Yes. Well, <clears throat> let's, uh, let's say that someone does come to you for the first time. And uh, uh, what kinds of practical assistance can you mm -hmm. offer? Um, our meetings have structure. Uh, they are very action-oriented. Uh, basically, we go around and talk about uh, who we are, what our skills and accomplishments are, what we've done so far on the job search, what we want from the group, and some goals that might uh, be out there for the coming week. Mm -hmm. So that's going to take in a lot of things. Um, there certainly is a lot of networking that goes on. A lot of suggestions, have you tried, have you done this? Maybe just some things about job search strategies. We might have somebody come in and say, well, I've been responding to all the ads in the paper. That's what I've been doing. I have been getting that paper every Sunday, and I have been, you know, really doing that. Well, we're looking at what? Maybe a 5 to 8% return. That's the highest. Mm -hmm. Now, this person doesn't understand that there are other strategies that they need to be using. And I can suggest that to them, but the beauty is that they've got a lot of other people there who are going to be talking about that, too. <laughs> and I can't tell you the number of clients who come back to us and, and talk about the shifts in their job search and what a difference it makes. What kinds of shifts? Uh, the momentum builds. They uh, feel better about what they're doing. They understand a lot of strategies that they didn't before. And indeed, they're starting to get results. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we had somebody a couple of weeks ago came in and she was still, she was not in a good place because she had been chosen out of 150 applicants uh, for, she was one of the 20 resumes that got in the door. And in fact, she was the top contender with one other person. Mm -hmm. um, she did not get the position, but she had gone from there to not having any response in three months. She's going to get there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is no question about it. Yeah, the very fact that she could get that far in that instance was uh, a sign absolutely. that she was on her way. <clears throat> oh, remarkable progress. Well, I, I have to say that, uh, you know, from an outside point of view, it looks like Austin is almost a full employment as far as uh, yep. the way these things mm -hmm. are measured. So what, what really is the need, is, as you've seen it, Clyde, for, for this service? Well, the service is, is although Austin is uh, at full employment, we are, have, have a great deal of these people are underemployed. And we teach them, we try to let them understand that they, there is a job out there for them. They have to be patient. And the group will help them with that patience because of, because of our meeting on, the, on a regular Monday basis. Mm -hmm. We have the same supporters generally, continually. 
It's myself uh, and Judy and uh, Homer Glandon, who has come to us from Crestview Baptist, and various other people who have been through the job support group who will come back and support at a later date. Okay, so you've got folks that uh, are, maybe their, their, their skills are what the job market in Austin is looking for, or they're underemployed, or, I mean, sketch in a little bit of what the net, that need is some more. The, under, the underemployed would be someone that has been, uh, a, a, for instance, a teacher in another city. They want to come here and they want to find a teaching job, specific teaching job in a college, and that job is not open to them. And so what they do, they go out and take something that's lesser than what their skills, what, what their skills are. Mm -hmm. And then what we try to do with them is say, well, there are things out there. We want you to take a look at your skills in another way. There are things that you have done in the past that perhaps will aid you in finding a, a job not like the teaching job, but another type of job. Okay. Now, I've heard that there are some churches that in addition to having <coughs> uh, cards for people to sign, say I'm here, attendance card sort of yes. thing, you, but have cards that would say, uh, here, um, here's my knowledge of uh, uh, the job possibility. Yes. This, is, this, is, this is a card that is uh, Saint Ca the Cathedral of St. Philip's in Atlanta does this as a job opportunity card. And what this, what this will allow the parishioner to do is that if they know of a particular job, to write it on the card and make it a part of their presentation uh, to, on the plate to the church. And so it's an opportunity to help in that way. We are currently not using this, but it's something we are considering at this I time. I see. So how else uh, do you find job possibilities to share with you? Well, let me say this. Um, at this point, after maybe this group is 10 years old, the number of people who have gone through this group is incredible. And they come back to this group with job leads. We all are getting faxes uh, all the time mm -hmm. from previous participants who now are in a hiring position, who uh -huh. know what it's like to be without work, who are mm -hmm. very interested Those in Those are your supporting. alumni that yeah. help. Exactly. Yeah, that becomes yeah. the old boy or old it girl does. network. It huh? is, it is. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's exciting. Mm -hmm. It is very exciting. And how else do you get uh, leads? Well, um, besides doing that, I have my own um, private practice along with three partners. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing. Once you've helped someone uh, and they are in a hiring position, certainly that they come mm -hmm. back uh, with referrals. So it's a, it's a lot of referrals. It is a, networking is the way what? We're looking at maybe 80% of jobs today come from networking mm -hmm. uh, in one form or another. Well, now, in the, in the second half of our show, we are going to have Rhonda McKnight from the Texas Employment Commission to come in and talk about the public... Uh, service that's rendered right. in regard to job possibilities, but um, um, just in the last minute we have here, mm -hmm. give us one sense of how uh, you've seen this making a difference in people's lives, mm -hmm. even spiritually. Yes, and, and thank you for saying that, because certainly I think there is no more mm -hmm. spiritual journey than job search. We talked a little bit before the show about that. Uh, when you lose your job, um, you lose many things. Mm -hmm. uh, many people lose a lot of self-esteem, you lose your work <coughs> identity, you lose your salary, you lose uh, accomplishments, you lose relationships with co-workers, uh, the loss is great. So, uh, Second, when our backs we... are against the wall, yeah. sometimes we, we indeed do really question a lot of things about life and what this is about. And I've seen many, many job seekers really, really so grateful and so much more in tune with who they are and who they are about, what their relationship is with their God. Mm -hmm. Well, you have been very helpful in your relationship to us. And uh, Judy Rohde, we're going to say goodbye to you at this time. But uh, Clyde, if you would stay with us. And Thank we'll you. look forward maybe to having you back, Judy. All right. And you folks come back with us in just a moment as we take our break now on Austin Faith Dialogue. Serving Austin means serving you. That has always been the primary goal of Austin Metropolitan Ministries. We are religion in action through the work of these organizations. Each plays a key role in making the capital city a better place to live, but we can't do it alone. Do you have some spare time, talents, or any resources that you can share? If you do, please call AMM at 472-7627 because serving Austin means serving you.
We're back on Austin Faith Dialogue, where today our focus is on career transition ministries. And we're being joined now by Rhonda McKnight of the uh, Texas Employment Commission, who uh, is uh, with our other guest, Clyde Presswood. And as we were uh, talking in the first half, we were saying that uh, I, I guess when people are in a job search, when the first place in the state of Texas that they might think about is the Texas Employment Commission. And uh, is, that, is that your main job, is to, is to help people find uh, work in terms of the uh, information that's brought to you about openings and so on? That, that is uh, part of it. Um, T Texas Employment Commission has several different aspects, um, the unemployment phase, the uh, job service where we help people look for work, and then special services, which are special programs that many times teach life skills and uh, job hunting skills, and that's what I do, is I'm a facilitator of the Career Quest program, which is a job search seminar. Okay, so you're, you're uh, very specifically uh, specializing in that side yes. of how, how to go about the search. Right. And um, how, you, you've heard the first half. You were, you've been eavesdropping on our show here <laughs> so far. Uh, what, what is there about uh, this process in the religious community that makes it different from what a, a public agency would offer? Well, as you know, Richard, uh, the state government at this particular time is kind of downsizing. Mm -hmm. And although we do try to give our clients as much service as possible, and when they come in and go through the job search with us, we try to help them as much as we can, but I've found that a job loss for most people is so devastating that they need support after that, even though they may come and they may be motivated through the job search seminar and learn some new skills about looking for work, they need someone to talk to, to back them up, to know they're not alone. And that's what I like so about Clyde's uh, uh, and Judy's program that they have started. Uh, we have, for years, referred people to their program for that added support after mm -hmm. the seminar. Mm -hmm. There'd be a warmth there that comes from being even within a religious community right. it makes a difference. Do, do you, uh, Clyde, in your work with uh, the support group, to draw upon TEC as far as their, I mean, do you come in every week with a list of jobs that they've got sort of thing? Is that part I wish, of it? I wish I, I wish I could do that, and I think that uh, those things are available from time to time, aren't they, Rhonda? But uh, not all the time. Do, do, is, there, is there a list of particular jobs? But we, we, what we do with TEC, and I try to do with Rhonda and with also with her uh, supervisor, Bruce Wilson, is to provide our people a way that have not been through their career quest that they're real people. They're people over there that really want to help them. Sometimes I think we think that state government is a terminology and it's not a, there's not, we don't see faces in it, but mm -hmm. over at the office that Rhonda works, uh, at special services, mm -hmm. they're real people and they'll provide a great deal of assistance to them. And so that's what we try to, to interface with, with them as, as much as we can. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it, it could seem, I guess, for somebody who is in the trauma of job, uh, changing, feeling like you're a faceless bureaucracy over right. there. Yes. And you're trying not. to put a human face on yes. them. And they're not. They're, they're wonderful, wonderful people. Mm -hmm. And they provide is quite a wonderful service uh, and, and it's, they're, they're very caring. And so that's why we have in the last, what, about a year or so, in a year and a half or so, we've tried, tried to interface more with one another. We've had several job support meetings within the TEC office, bringing people in to uh, to that office to let them see what what they are and to meet Rhonda and some of the people in that office and so they'll know where it is sometimes an address just saying an address is just not enough I you, see. Need to, you need uh -huh. to have, actually fit a, a, a place and a name and, and people that kind way. of shepherd folks through yes, the process. Shepherd. yes mm -hmm. that's right that's a good time yes sir okay well as this shepherd comes in here with, uh, <laughs> with someone that may need a little uh, help then um, are you, how much help are you able to offer? I mean, are there lots of jobs out there just waiting to be filled? Uh, what's, what's the story on the job front these days? Well, of course, as you know, Texas Employment Commission is, is going through uh, quite a, a change. will eventually become part of the Texas Workforce Commission or is already a part of that. Uh, we do have what we refer to as the Governor's Job Bank available for people to come in and look at state jobs that are listed. They have started something new with the Job Express, which is private industry jobs that are on the computer for people to come in and look and see if they would like to um, 
apply for those jobs. There are still some employers that prefer not to uh, have their names given without some screening. Mm -hmm. So there are jobs on there that may not tell you the employer name, but you'd need to come through one of the facilitators or interviewers there to get further information and for us to see if you're qualified. Um, then there is the interstate job bank also available, but most of those jobs are going to be in other states or other areas I besides see. Austin. Mm -hmm. But if somebody wanted to stay in Austin, um, is, is there more opportunity than there may have been at one time for uh, relocating? I think so, simply because unemployment is down, even though there are people underemployed, um, and there's a lot of competition still for jobs. I think that the very fact that people are, un are um, that, that employment is, is stronger now makes it better for you to be able to stay in the area. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, you know, in the first half of the show we were talking about what, what the need is in mm -hmm. this regard. And uh, <clears throat> you, you read in the paper, for instance, about uh, AMD working with uh, Austin Community College to, to set up some technical types of things right. because they're short of folks to do some of, of, of that kind of work. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems to be a shortage of, of technical, uh, technically trained people but that there is, uh, th this doesn't apply across the board. There's not a shortage across the board for skills. There are for certain skills, Richard. There for the high tech, you're talking about the, the designers in, in, the, in the upper echelon, those jobs seem to be filled. Mm -hmm. at, the, at, the, at the lower end of it, they're, they're, you're having to, re and that with ACC and AMD, they're trying to retrain people, trying to get back in through these retraining processes much what TEC uh, is, is trying to do is provide opportunities. If you can't find work in your chosen field, it's trying to retrain you based on whatever your skill set is mm -hmm. to get you into another field. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that this, this is one of the things, in the religious community, the, the folks who would come to you and say, I need some support, right. need some help, Yes. Are, are those who have skills that are not being call for right away. Currently, yes. Yeah. Currently. And it would take a while to find work. And um, uh, and what you're saying is that you think that the, what the religious community has offered here is a uh, more of a more of an emotional and a spiritual dimension Absolutely. than you're able to offer as the state of Texas. Uh, well, yes. <laughs> In that case, we can do a lot, I hope. Uh, I think we do uh, for folks when they come in. But you still need that um, knowing that someone is there to help you, uh, that will work with you mm -hmm. past the process at a state agency. Mm -hmm. um, what we try to do, and I think what, what Clyde is trying to do here, is to offer resources to people. Where else can you go to get help? I'm, I'm, hopefully I'm one of those people that you can come to. I can send people to Clyde mm -hmm. for support. Uh, there are several other uh, groups and agencies in town that if people don't know about like uh, Las Caritas it Yeah, is. yeah. Uh, to tell us about these other agencies. We named the church related groups that were doing this uh, mm -hmm. support work, yeah. but uh, you, you just mentioned another. What is that again? Las Caritas, I believe is the way they... Caritas. Caritas, uh, uh, yeah. other people. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's job placement through that. I don't know about job placement, but there is sometimes financial and emotional support sure, through that way, sure. too. And, and Meeting people emergency need, needs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think as a, as a community, we need to all work together. But there are some other agencies that are doing job placement as such. It seems to me, I, I visited the Salvation Army once, and I think that uh, think they for folks there, they, they, they may have even had a TEC office there that was taking applications and being more on site in mm -hmm. that regard. Yes, that's true. Goodwill, and I think. Goodwill? Does they have that? an older they have an older workers program 55 and older an older worker program in which they in which they provide job placement and who is they the goodwill goodwill, the goodwill does okay right. all right well that that's good to uh, have a little bit of a sense of the universe of resources that are there and in case people weren't with us during the first half of the show I'd like to have that number brought up again in terms of uh, the career transition ministries um, R repeat the number for us. It's 795-TASK or 8275. Okay. 
and uh, I see it there. So that, that would be a way of, of plugging in directly with you. Yes. And if, if folks wanted to, to get wired to your services, they, they just look you up in the phone book. Is that the idea? That's true, or I can give you our number. <laughs> well, uh, I, I'm not sure if you've got it to show, but just give it to us. It's 467-1544, or in the phone book, it would be Texas Employment Commission Special Services. Okay. Could they ask for Rhonda? They could. <laughs> they could. It's but nice. there's lots of folks there that would be willing to help anyone. Yeah. You know, you know I've heard that one of the um, uh, techniques that's been developed by people who are on a job search is that they know, can find somebody by name, ask for yes. somebody by name. That's true. And uh, how, how does that work? Well, it connects them to that person. If you know, if you, when you're going in to, uh, to, and you know the name, that's what networking does. Mm -hmm. We try to provide names of people so that when they call up, they can ask for, uh, for Richard or Rhonda. Mm -hmm. And that connects them to that person. It gives them, makes them feel more comfortable about uh, asking for what they're, uh, what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. And what other uh, kinds of guidelines do you give them in terms of how to go about it? Well, what I, t what I tell people, Richard, is that Austin is a relationship city. Mm -hmm. It's not what you know or who you know, but who knows you. We try to get them in the loop, so to speak, on how to get out and network with people. You take an engineer, 25 years at IBM, he's been in a cubicle, but he doesn't know anything about networking. Mm -hmm. we, and you're trying to change that in three to six months to get him back uh, in, the, uh, in the mainstream. It becomes difficult sometimes. They don't understand it. Let me just mention this, though. Networking, to me, and since this is a faith, related show. Networking is a modern day equivalent of casting your bread upon the waters. Mm -hmm. The more you give, the more you receive. And the more and we teach people, just keep on giving. Mm -hmm. The more you give, the more you get back. It comes back in strange ways oftentimes, mm -hmm. but it does come back. So that, uh, that that's where the spiritual dimension comes yes. in too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I also think of networking as cast, uh, Jesus saying, cast your nets. Uh, yes. Out and uh, the discipleship is a, is a sign of, uh, of relationships with, between people yes. and helping each other yes, in that regard. Is. Well, I, um, I think that uh, as people may look at this today and they get some, some emotional support, spiritual direction just from our conversation, we've, we've accomplished that. And if, if it can lead into some practical networking, as we've also talked about, we've uh, gone even further. I want to thank you, Rhonda McKnight. Thank you. Thank you, Clyde Presswood, for and being with you, us. thank you, Richard. Thanks for having us. And thank you, folks, for looking in. Hope you'll be with us on our uh, next uh, edition of Austin Faith Dialogue. I'm Richard Thompson, and peace be with you. Metropolitan Ministries at 472-7627.